Hey, welcome back to episode three of Learning the Basics on Fishing. And we're going to run to town and check out some hooks and some weights and some bobbers. So if that sounds like fun, don't go nowhere. And then we'll head on back out here to the lake and practice some casting. See y'all there. So as you can see, there are all kinds of corks or bobbers, whatever you want to call them. I would usually go for the, you know, something like that, the red and white. That's just me. I really like the round, round ones, like you see in here. Only bigger. There's a little package there, but apparently they're sold out. in various types of weights. These are egg sinkers. You run your line through them. If you can see that. The weights seem to be slim pickings. So I'm not going to be able to really show you all much here. Okay, here we go, here we go. This is what I use. Something like this size right here. And this style. In this size as well, but sometimes I use smaller, sometimes bigger. We're going to go ahead and get these. It's it apparently uh, not too many of them to get. And you can use swivels. I don't personally recommend them because if you uh, get a real big fish, it will bend this out. The little loop right there. So I generally just go for the uh, tying it straight to your hook. Here's uh, different kinds of hooks here. These, it says bait holder. If you can see it, there's a little barb right there on the end. Not sure if you can see that or not. But that will hold your bait on there if you're using worms, shrimp, any kind of bait like that. However, if you're using like minnows, you do not need that. You would just use a regular straight hook. Like these right here. So they have no barb on them, but you're only going to use this part of it. Usually they have the kind with the leaders on them, but uh, when I say leaders, it's just the hook with about six inches or so of line automatically tied or automatically <laughs> that is pre-tied on there they come like that but these right here will work just fine these are one out and that's pretty much a good general size for crappie things such as that. If you're going for perch, stuff like that, bluegill, I would go with that size right there. And you do not need the super strong hooks. These hooks down here are a little more specialty. But just these hooks back here, the eagle claws, are good hooks nothing wrong with them and as you can see quite a bit of price difference $1.49 $1.29 then you jump over here and you're $3.49 $3.29 but they're better made out of better steel they won't bend quite as bad but the Eagle Claw I haven't had too many. I have had them bend, but generally it's when I was hung up and just pulling straight out. 
Well, that's pretty much it as far as hooks and weights and not much of a selection of bobbers. Now when you get to talking about these here with the lead head on them, they're jig heads and you put little jigs on them. Uh, you find some jigs and I'll show you. Like right here, this would be your jigs. Things like that that you can put on those lead heads. And they have smaller ones too. But, uh, that's later on when you start getting a little more advanced. Remember, this is just the basics, nothing fancy. All right, y'all have your weight tied on. Are you ready to learn to cast? Let's practice a little casting. Now you can do this in your backyard or at a park as long as there's nobody around and no glass windows are within the range. Because sometimes they don't go exactly the way you want them to go. But as, sim as far as casting, it's pretty simple. You just, with these reels, just push the button and when you get right about there, let go of that button and it'll come loose and your weight will take off. See, hold it like that, bring it back, make sure there's no bait behind you and no trees within the reach, you know, up above you and all around you. Make sure nothing's there for your hook or lure or in this case, a weight, nothing for it to hit. So just, just like that. And then you can reel it in. And you don't have to throw it like you're swinging a baseball bat, nothing like that. There's, you know, granted there's no wind today, but if you're casting under the wind, it's gonna be a little more difficult and it's probably not gonna go quite as far, but it'll still go far enough. Push the button, bring it back, and let it go. Actually, I'm holding it about right there, aren't I? So hold it about right there instead of down there. Depends on your wind and the weight of your lure or the weight you're using with your hook. Now hold on, let's do this one more time. And then you give it a try. Push the button, let it go. Now, y'all give it a try. See how it works for you. If you have any questions or comments, put it down below and I will try to answer those for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like it, and share it with your friends and your family. They might enjoy it themselves. And if you haven't seen the episode one or two, I'll put a link down there in the description to those videos as well. We covered uh, the reels and a little bit on the rods and tying the knot. So hopefully you find some usefulness in these videos. And the different things we've been covering so far, your reels and your rods, your weights and your hooks, I'll put a link to Amazon down there in the description. And if you feel so inclined to shop Amazon, be sure and use those links, even if you're not buying anything fishing related, if you're buying something else. If you'll use those links, I'll make a little bitty commission off of those purchases you make and it won't cost you anything extra it would sure help the channel out so i appreciate it y'all keep on keeping on i'll see y'all down the road bye hey welcome back to part three on learning the basics and the basics are is there's wasp and bumblebees flying all around here kind of my fault for standing here isn't it